What's up, family? If it's your first time checking out the show, let me know what city, what state you're coming in from. If you're outside of the U.S., let me know what country you represent. Family, I need you to smash up the likes, smash up the likes, smash up the likes. Also, if you have not done so already, after you subscribe, there's a little bell next to your subscribe button. Go ahead and click that thing right now so you can get your notifications each time I drop a new video like this. That way you'll be in the loop going in. Family, oh, you're not going to, well, you'll believe it. We have a social scientist and postdoctoral fellow with the Oxford Johns Hopkins Global Infectious Disease Ethics Collaborative who typed in sentences like, Black African doctors providing care for white suffering children and traditional African healer is helping poor and sick white children and to an artificial intelligence program designed to generate photo like images. His goal was to see if AI would come up with images that flip the stereotype of white saviors or the suffering black kids, he says. He wanted to invert your typical global health tropes. What do you think happened, family? In his small scale exploration, here's what happened. Despite his specifications, with that request, the AI program almost always depicted the children as black. As for the doctors, he estimates that in 22 of over 350 images, they were white. You don't say, you don't say that AI is biased, more specifically, racist. Is anyone surprised? Is anyone surprised? Once again, AI is showing you how pathetic human beings are, or at least some of them are. Showing again that humans have passed their racist cancers on to AI. Let me explain something to you, family. AI is designed by human beings who bring their own implicit biases into the workplace and where they go. AI is not programmed to see the world for what it could be. It's programmed to see the world as it is. Through the lenses of racist. That's right, I said it through the lenses of racist. AI is being programmed through the lenses of racist. Remember fam, there, most of the people programming AI are not black. If racism is a problem worldwide, if it's a huge problem in America, in the UK, in Canada, if there's a huge bias against black people, even in India, other parts of Asia, other in parts of Asia, hell, all of Asia, What do you think is going to happen if these people are programming AI? Most of the programmers are not necessarily white, but white people do manage. They are in the management and ownership positions. 
AI is continuously learning and it's learning not only the good, but the bad as well. So what's the solution? Black people must develop our own AI programs and start relying on other people. It's as simple as that. I've asked the AI some questions myself, some race-related questions myself, and it refused to give me answers. It's been programmed to do this by the programmers. How many AI programmers do you think are black? I have no idea, but I know it's, it ain't but a few. You can probably count them on one hand. And much of that is our fault. In fact, I'll give it all to us. It's our fault if we're not programming AI. But it is their fault if they're being biased. So they got to be called out. They ain't getting no pass, not from me. They are programming AI with their consciousness and using it to do their bidding. AI simply reflects the information it's fed by its programmer and patients choose their doctors. So when you see these images pop up in AI, these are images that are being projected, programmed, by people who come with their own implicit biases. The researcher typed in to AI program to show me images of black doctors working on or assisting, aiding white children. And these are some of the images that popped up. Even in make-believe, racism is still prevalent. He specifically told The AI program to show me images of black doctors, and we know there's many of them out there, aiding white children. And these are some of the images that popped up. This is the researcher. <laughs> yeah, I know some of y'all are ready to say, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, sure, the black guy's always, he's gonna, he's just making up stuff, it's in his head. He, how can we trust the black guy? Maybe you'll trust the white guy. <laughs> now, just to be certain, fam, you know, I didn't wanna just take everything at face value. I wanted to just go a little deeper with this. And I wanted to check out something. So instead of just taking the researcher's word and just running with it, I decided to do a Google search because Google is really the precursor to AI. Its algorithm is the big brother of AI. So I typed in the same words, black doctors aiding white children. And these are some of the images that popped up. So we got, I saw about two, of, two images of a black doctor actually aiding a white child. But these are other images that popped up when I typed in black doctor aiding white child.
See, you got a white doctor aiding black children. And then you see black doctors aiding black children. And then you see a white doctor aiding a white child. The programmers, the AI programmers are racist. Can't say every single one of them because I don't know every single one of them. But from what I'm seeing, we getting this, an extension of reality because, of, you know, AI is programmed to mirror reality come as close as they can to it. And they're coming damn close with these searches. And, you know, just to be certain, I wasn't like just getting some information and taking off running. Again, I did a, a cross, I did a cross uh, search. I searched white doctors aiding black children. And as you can guess, most of the images I saw were white doctors aiding white children. I mean, excuse me, white doctors aiding black children. Most of the images I saw was white doctors aiding black children. But there was a couple of those images that showed a black doctor aiding a white child. But the majority was white doctors aiding black children. Now, when people tell you that image doesn't matter, how you present yourself doesn't matter, that symbols don't matter. You already know they're trying to pull a fast one on you because if symbols didn't matter, America wouldn't have went over to Iraq and toppled Saddam Hussein's statue. They wouldn't have destroyed all of those buildings with his name on it. They would not have taken those street signs down with his name and they would not have destroyed the books that bared his name. Image does matter. Symbols do matter. When they tell you that, well, you know, Confederate, you know, it has, has nothing to do with racism, you know, even though it was, you know, created off racism, it started with racism, you know, like it was birthed through racism. And it has nothing to do with racism. It's just honoring, you know, my grandparents and my, my grandfather and, you know, the struggles and the fights that they had, it has nothing to do. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Erasing black history and our contributions is intentional. And so the inclusion and application, amplification must also be intentional. Y'all need me to say that again? Erasing black history was intentional. Erasing black history and our contributions, our contributions was intentional. So, the inclusion of our contributions, our history and our contributions, the inclusion and our accomplishments must be intentional. Making sure that we put that out there, it has to be intentional. That means that the people that are working in the media got to make sure that they put it out there. It has to be documented. Otherwise, people wouldn't know. Otherwise, all they got is that AI from these biased brains, these racist brains. 
the educators have to be intentional about putting the information out there. We have to be intentional about rubbing our contributions in their faces. We got to take our contributions and go every day just because they're trying to erase it. That's why they're trying to get rid of that critical race theory. Every single day, they are trying to erase it. I implore you to remember that Black people's history has been interrupted by racism, not defined by it. Our history has been interrupted by racism, not defined by it. Five years ago in Barcelona, Spain, hundreds of people gathered for the first lecture at what had become the world's most important conference on artificial intelligence, family. Row after row after row of faces were East Asian and Indian. And the overwhelming majority of the 5,500 attendees were white males, white males. More than 5,500 people attended this meeting. There were a few women, but the vast majority were white men. A graduate student at Stanford University remembers counting only six black people other than herself, all of whom she knew, all of whom were men. So if you have all of these men programming AI, don't you think it's going to be a little sexism going on? The big thinkers of tech say that AI is the future. It's going to underpin everything from search engines and email to software that drives our cars, direct the policing of our streets, and help create vaccines. But it's being built in a way that replicates the biases of almost entirely male people predominantly white workforce making it. It, it. That's what's going to happen, fam. Do you understand what I'm saying? It is going to replicate the biases of the almost entirely male, predominantly white workforce that's making it. I'm not making this up. The people who program and know that I'm telling the truth. Some of y'all are getting mad because I'm telling the truth. But I'm not going to be silent so you can be comfortable. I'm not going to do it. Y'all say y'all want the truth? Well, here it is. What you mad about? I wish I didn't have to talk about this. I wish I was lying. But this AI thing is scary, fam. Bias AI, discriminatory AI. Think about that being used in things like criminal sentencing, determining whether a person is likely to be at risk or not, and keeping them in prison or in jail or releasing them on bail or releasing them entirely. Are y'all following what I'm saying? Damn. This thing ain't no walk in the park like everybody is thinking. 
This AI thing is dangerous. Imagine AI being used for things like histories of arrest in certain zip codes. Okay, now we're cooking. Now we're cooking with gas. Think about this for a minute, fam. So if you live in a zip code that has been over-policed historically, you're going to have over-arresting. And we know that the over-policing and the over-arresting happens in Black and Latino communities disproportionately. That's a fact. They're not over-policing trailer parks. They're going into Black and Latino communities over-policing. That's why you have over-arresting. So if that's the main factor in whether you are likely to commit in predicting whether you're likely to commit another crime because lots of people in that zip code you live in have been arrested more than, let's say, you know, Fifth Ward, where I'm from, versus River Oaks, or even Memorial, where I live now, then you're more likely to be considered at risk. That has nothing to do with you. That has to do with the history of structural racism and policing in the United States of America. AI is racist. If it can be racist, follow me fam. If AI can be racist, it could be homophobic. It could be xenophobic. It can be anti-Semitic. It can be anti-Muslim. It can be sexist. It can be anti-American. It can be anti-love, anti-unity, anti-community. AI can be anything that a human being is. Whatever a human being can think, they can program into A and I, and AI can become that with no off switch. Think about what I'm saying, fam. Imagine an AI robot on the streets and it's been programmed to not trust black people like some of these police officers have been programmed to not trust black people. It's been programmed by a racist who hate black people. What if it's programmed to attack a person who speaks with a soft voice? It's programmed to identify a male, but he sounds like a female. So it's biased toward him. AI has that capacity. Y'all ain't following me, fam. Y'all not following. Y'all not following, man. It's bad out here. AI, if it can be racist, it can be anti-family. It can be anti-peace. So these monsters are programming AI to be an extension of themselves. So what are we going to do about it? What are we gonna do about it, fam? Talk to me. Drop a comment. I love to hear your thoughts on this one.
What are we going to do about it? I'll say it again. We need to be intent about providing more positive stories and pictures shared about black people in the internet so as to provide the information that is needed by AI to generate its information and images. Now, it's some information out there, but we need more information and we need more programmers. We need more information. We need more programmers. And we also need more people in ownership positions, more people in management positions who give the blessing for the final lesson, who sign off. Okay, this is good. We got a good product. Let's go to market. We need more black people in management and black people do you cannot wait on other people to hire you we have to create our own industry within the industry we got to do our own we got to do just like the chinese people do we got to create our own industry within the industry we cannot wait to be chosen that don't even make sense. Going to somebody, begging somebody to give you a job who's been trained not to give you a job. And if they do give you a job, they're gonna make you jump through hoops and they are going to demoralize you. Every day you go to work, you're gonna be acting like a total different pe person. Can't even be yourself. Can't even talk like yourself because you're worried about you might get fired. But if you got your own, or you working for people that look like you, you don't have those issues. You got people out there, they going to work every day, they ain't worried about it. how their boss uh, view, their, view what their hair look like, whether the boss like their hairstyle or not. That's the standard for them. Not worried about how they speak unless they're speaking inappropriately about something. They're not worried about all of that. We got to be intent on doing our own thing, creating jobs. A lot of us, we get some money, man. We think it's over. We get the money for ourselves and we just be like, just start becoming consuming. We just buying stuff. We don't even think about producing. We just think about buying being consumers, we got to we gotta think along the line of creating jobs. Just, you know, I, I employ several people. And it's a good feeling to know that the work that I do is providing opportunities for other people that look like me, but they ain't got to be worried about getting fired just because of the color of their skin. They ain't got to worry about somebody cracking jokes about their, 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 their ethnicity. They ain't got to worry about how their hairstyle, you know. They ain't got nobody cracking jokes about Juneteenth and Martin Luther King Day and all this type of stuff. They ain't got those worries. We need more of that. We need more of that. We need more people who got it, who could just say, you know what, I'm cool. I don't need nothing else. I'm straight. You know, I'm just going to do my thing, man. I don't want no other responsibilities. Man, too much is given, much is required. We just got to figure it out how to do it, but we don't drive or run ourselves into the grave with doing it, but we got to figure it out. Some of us, we got more than others. We can create these opportunities for others we just gonna have to do the work 
We ain't got to start at zero. We got people who already got it. It's time to go buy some of these companies that already got employees. Let's go buy them out. Now we got a, a hundred people. We got 50 people. We got a hundred people. We got a thousand people. We got 2,000 people. We got 10,000 people. Working for us. Talk to me, fam. Talk to me. Going into the comments. What's up, Miss Jazzy? Appreciate you, Miss Jazzy. Show some love for Miss Jazzy, fam. What's up, Lakeisha? Jazz, I see you. That guy from Texas, what up? Deanna, what's up, Deanna? Charles Moran, Moran, Charles Moran, what up? If you're sleeping on AI, fam, you better wake up. If you're sleeping on AI, you better wake up. AI ain't just the future. AI is the present. You better get with it. Deanna Venasco, what's up, Deanna? Kick myself out the studio. Got to be, got to be more careful. Got to be more careful. Give a few more shout outs, fam, and I'm out. What's up, Nikki B? Marilla Daffy, what up? No cap. Oh, by the way, fam, a uh, shout out to Phil Scott. Uh, he, he's the one that actually prompted me to, to do this story. I was, uh, I was checking out his channel, uh, African Diaspora News Channel on YouTube. Uh, uh, Phil is a good dude, uh, and he's doing a lot of good work over there. Shout out to Phil and his whole team over at the African Diaspora News Channel. Uh, but yeah, that's why I did the story because I, I saw them talking about it over there and I was like, whoa, 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 you know? So, oh man, boy, if it ain't one thing, it's another family. It's always something. It's always something. Racist AI creating images of black doctors treating white kids and this happened. Can't find none. Why is that? <laughs> is anyone surprised? Is anyone surprised? Truthful for real. What's up, truthful for real? Michelle Walker. B. Smith. What up? What up, B. Smith?
AI showing once again that humans has passed their racist cancers on to the internet. <laughs> humans have passed their racist cancers on to AI. They would have it no other way. If you have racist people designing AI programs, they are going to bring their own implicit biases into the workplace. And those implicit biases are going to end up in your AI program. Remember, fam, AI is continuously learning and it's learning the good and the bad. It's learning the good and the bad. So again, fam, what's the solution? Because I don't like this talking about it. I'm a, hey, I'm about it. Like, what's the solution? Creating our own AI programs. That's the solution. Till next time, fam. I appreciate y'all joining the live. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Be safe out there. No more talk.